Hello, and welcome to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing with access to over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. For more information, check the link in the description below or the bio section of our channel. You know, for decades, an effective vaccine for HIV has been one of modern medicine's greatest, most persistent challenges. The virus is just a master of disguise, constantly changing its form. But what if we could teach our immune system to attack it from multiple angles all at the same time? Well, some new research just published in Science Immunology details a breakthrough strategy that does exactly that, giving us a whole new blueprint for immunity. So let's break it down. First, we're going to dig into why an HIV vaccine is so incredibly hard to make in the first place. Then we'll dive into the really clever precision strategy that scientists have developed to get around this problem. We'll look at how they put this idea to the test in two really important studies. We'll analyze their breakthrough results. And then finally, we'll explore what this new blueprint could mean for the future. All right, first up, the HIV vaccine challenge. What is the fundamental problem here? I mean, why, after all these years of research, has a truly effective vaccine remained just so out of reach? And that is a huge question, right? The answer really lies in this fascinating ongoing battle between a uniquely tricky virus and our very own immune system. So it really boils down to three core hurdles. First, HIV is a total shapeshifter. It is constantly mutating. Second, our immune system often gets fooled. It ends up attacking the parts of the virus that are always changing while it ignores the parts that actually stay the same. And third, and this is absolutely crucial, the specific immune cells that can produce those master key antibodies we need for a vaccine, they are incredibly rare. It's like trying to find one specific person in a city of millions. So how in the world do you find and activate these super rare cells? This is where the new strategy gets really smart. It's not about carpet bombing the immune system, it's more like sending in a laser guided missile. Okay, so the ultimate goal here is to get our bodies to make something called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs for short. You should think of these as the immune system's master keys. See, unlike a normal antibody that might only unlock one specific version of HIV, BNABs can recognize and shut down a huge variety of different strains. They are pretty much the holy grail of HIV vaccine research. But to get those master keys, you can't just start anywhere you have to find the rookie cells that have the potential to be trained to make them. And that's the whole idea behind germline targeting. Think of it like a special forces mission for a vaccine. Its only job is to go in, find those rare precursor B cells, and kickstart their training to become elite antibody-producing factories. And that brings us right to the heart of this new research. Because HIV is so complex, one type of master key probably isn't enough. You really need a whole keychain, an army of different BNABs. So the big unanswered question was this, could a single vaccine cocktail activate the starting cells for several different types of BNABs all at once? Or would they just get in each other's way and cancel each other out? So to figure this out, researchers designed two brilliant parallel studies to put this cocktail idea to the ultimate test. They really tackled the problem from two different angles. One study used rhesus macaque monkeys, which are a really close primate model to humans. The other used mice that were specially engineered to have human-like immune cells. And, crucially, that mouse study also compared two different vaccine technologies, a more traditional protein-based vaccine against a modern mRNA platform. And what they found in the primate study? Well, it was really, really promising. After just eight weeks, the monkeys had generated memory B cells for all three of the targets. Now, there was a little bit of initial competition between the immune responses, but that quickly leveled out and all three developed successfully. So far, so good. Okay, now let's hop over to the mouse study because here researchers found something even more specific. When they were comparing the two types of vaccines they tested, one format was the clear winner. And wow, the results here were night and day. The traditional protein vaccine, yeah, it activated the target cells, but the response was pretty weak and uneven. But the mRNA vaccine, the same kind of tech used in some of the COVID-19 shots, it produced a really powerful and, importantly, balanced activation of all four target cell types at the same time. It was obvious. The delivery platform was a total game changer. So, when you take the results from both the primate and the mouse studies and you put them together, you get a very clear, very powerful conclusion. 
The single biggest takeaway, the headline from all of this is simple. It works. Their main hypothesis was correct. It is actually biologically possible to activate multiple distinct lines of defense against HIV all at once. And this isn't just some small step. It's a massive proof of concept for the entire field. So let's just recap what we learned here. That early competition between the responses, it didn't really matter in the long run. The quality and the virus fighting power of the antibodies were just as good as if they'd been trained one by one. Nothing was lost, nothing was compromised. And we learned that the vaccine technology itself, with mRNA really shining, is absolutely critical to success. And you don't have to take my word for it. The researchers themselves put it perfectly. They said these studies established the conceptual foundation for a whole new generation of vaccines. They've essentially drawn up the blueprint, proving that this more complex, multi-pronged attack is a truly viable path forward. So what does this new blueprint actually mean for the real world? What are the bigger implications of getting the scientific thumbs up? Well, the most immediate benefit is just a massive boost in efficiency. I mean, instead of a long, complicated schedule of different shots, each needing to train a different immune response one by one, this approach puts everything on a superhighway. It could dramatically shorten and simplify the path to generating that powerful, multi-pronged immunity we need to finally stop HIV. So really, the whole story we've just walked through is pretty elegant when you lay it out. The challenge was a big one, activating all these different rare cells at once. The solution they tested was this cocktail of precision immunogens. The result was proof that you can achieve broad and precise priming all at the same time, and the future this unlocks is one where a more effective, more efficient HIV vaccine is finally within our reach. And that leaves us with this one last huge question. HIV isn't the only complex virus out there that outsmarts our immune system. Could this blueprint for a multi-target attack also be the key to making vaccines for other notorious shapeshifters like influenza or hepatitis C? This research was aimed at solving a problem for one virus, but it may have just given us a brand new strategy to fight many more. Thanks for tuning in.